<laughs> Nor do I think it likely. <laughs> I know, but I'm trying to link them up. <laughs> You're making my job too hard. <laughs> so nothing ever changed. I tried, I tried to simplify our setup, less mics, more interaction with people, and you go start recording it without telling the producer. <laughs> what the heck? Can we get, can we get quiet for a second? Sure. So now we're officially underway, sort of. Hello, and thanks for joining us on the podcast that discusses all things gaming. Coming to you from the home of Gen Con and the gaming capital of the world, this is The Established Facts. Have an audio sync for an yeah, audience, apparently. See, yes, I know how that Dead. works. If I you, of all people, no. Uh, that's right. I'll do it. I'm still having a very good time. What's no. the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the background so, power on that so we actually that's managed fall. to get I them to set up some background music for us. You want me a background? Oh, that is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> They say they can do a the three, cure uh, four or five hours on Phantom. Go <laughs> oh, it's like sitting in the green room. But it's also a shared Phantom between the two. It's a nice show. Oh, it is a lot like that. <laughs> <laughs> like I know. They're both set up identical, so. Cool. Well, I had this dream. has been received. That this is exactly what this is exactly like sitting in the green room. What it was like. Oh, oh I see. It's big too. Yeah. Yeah. How was the casting the house? Studio itself. Wouldn't that be strange? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, how's it your? It really office? only gets. Oh, it's got a pool. Yeah, right. It really only gets filled up when the Rockets show up for first. Before we get away, can I get a Really good. Sure. Wow. On the air. My shirt matches your tattoo. Thanks, man. I don't want to do that. I have that shirt back on. Right on for like four bucks, right? And it wasn't my size. I was surprised. Right on. Having a conversation with people walking by about their t-shirts, right? Is that what it is? Tattoo. Not it's, even more. It's tattoo match my t-shirt. Short and fat and bald and ugly. <laughs> the guy from Impanima is ugly. <laughs> and man, is he ugly. He's so dang ugly. Right, yeah? So just keep and, that one going? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's, actually, there's actually a Mad Magazine. That's me when I'm happy. When I was a kid. Oh, Mad Looks Magazine. Looks like that. Who to? Uh, Terry and Andy. Oh, wait, who is that? My mom and dad. That's what I thought. I never this is called a pathetic hand. excuse. Jeremy, no. yeah, we need a real pen here. Yeah, your pen didn't work. What? Two. No, that's Terry real. and Andy. Oh. One more, you know. Wow. That's you, you should probably find this Margaret Weiss woman. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard of her. Booth 186. I saw her this morning. Booth 186. Yeah, because here I am in this ridiculous chariot. And <laughs> eBay. Never. I will never the... sell it. <laughs> I will never sell it for yeah, less right, than a dollar. Yeah. That's exactly what will happen. It'll fall between a grating and get smashed yeah. by a 400 pound box. That, yeah, probably. Cheers. So I'm driving this ridiculous chariot. This morning, I said, Oh, you know, I need to go check out the booth and see, make sure it's all set up properly. So we go, I drive down there, and and I come to the uh, okay, just go in this door. I go in the door, and it's like straight path right back to the okay, and I'm there at the booth. I turn around, it's like the labyrinth, everything had closed in, chain, <laughs> boxes in the ailes. It was. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying I'm to sad. find my way out you know everyone wants to find the way to the center of the labyrinth I just want to get out <laughs> and I just have to drive right by Margaret's booth I didn't even know it was Margaret's booth and then I know right now this is me <laughs> like hey <laughs> I know you <laughs> Jeremy, do you want water? So now that's how we start the show. Lance, we start the water? show with the Jim Thank you, yes. Does it make you feel better? Derek, no? Are we? I did not realize that. Sorry, you no, did. Yeah, I didn't it's okay. It's hey, it's Jim It's all about having a good time. That's right. right. That's all about stories. <laughs> yep. So this is uh, Rygar, a.k.a. Jeremy. <laughs> 
starting us off today. And That's right. We'll Are you do introductions. No. no. <laughs> After we're done? Yeah, because that makes sense. Yeah, uh, because some of us might not want to give our own names. <laughs> my, my name is Margaret Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jose. Starting on my left. <laughs> on a stick? No. no. Oh, you know, Sorry. Oh, my. I guess, I guess it's not really happening. <laughs> Starting to my this right. Is just, this is just the microphone right. test the section of the podcast. George Sakai. The outtakes. Just to oh, make sure. Yeah. <laughs> so do you actually want to like maybe make this sound like a legitimate start to a podcast? As soon as gonna... going diagonally from me. That's right. <laughs> we're going to roll. Are, are, are we waiting for? <laughs> we're waiting for Laura to come back, right? No, not necessarily. <laughs> she may not come. <laughs> so she just disappeared. The truth of no, marriage. no. She want, I, I, I wanted to go and get my, uh, my bring my Kindle down so we could properly demonstrate. I also turned. Uh, Do we need to file a missing per- person's thing? Oh, get a milk actually, you don't actually have to have the Kindle. We could do it with the, what we've got in the box. Everyone might want to put their phones on vibrate. The Kindle app on mine. Mine's, on, mine's been on that. How about not day. vibrate oh, on the table? So in the middle of the show. Yeah. Oh. yeah. If your phone's on vibrate, <laughs> don't have it on the table. Oh, that's someone, logical. someone loves me. <laughs> I don't know if that'll help or not, but yeah, we'll see. I, might. I, I imagine we're probably going to have a bunch of people here on there. That's all right. I can deal with that. Especially if it's from that channel. I'll be clipping. Clipping. Okay, click, 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 click. Clippers. His advantage is I have two channels coming from that mic. Yeah, that's right. So, that's right. I will laugh directly into the microphone. Let's please don't. If possible. So, We're yeah. In you want to ask? Yeah, oh. right, yeah. Uh, well, yes, we would like to welcome everyone uh, to another episode of The Established Facts. This is episode 77. Uh, we are uh, joined by uh, a very large <laughs> Established Facts panel. There's like 10 of us hanging out. And, of course... Uh, Are a you very good friend. A fat? <laughs> no, Just fat. me. Not large. <laughs> not, not large in mass. Uh, okay. Large in quantity. Good. That's right, right? Yeah, it's, yeah I think it's the right word. Okay. okay ask the author. Uh, did you uh, write mass versus <laughs> quantity? <laughs> As my father used to say. <laughs> As he was looking at the book of Isaiah, <laughs> that was a prophet that was paid by the word. <laughs> That's right. Dog on it. And of course, we are joined uh, with our good friend, uh, Mr. Tracy Hickman. And uh, we're going to get into what seems to be like a really fun opportunity to uh, play his new game, uh, Sojourner Tales. But before we do that, uh, of course, we have to start out our official Gen Con episode with just a little bit of a roundtable of kind of what we're, what we're really looking forward to for this year, Gen Con 2014. So, uh, Mr. Hickman, if you would kick us off, that would be awesome. I'm really looking forward to Gen Con 2015. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to a lot, actually. This, this particular convention, we've, uh, you mentioned Sojourner Tales. We did something a little bit different this year. We uh, started selling the game before the doors opened. Okay. Uh, and uh, I got to know how. I, I, how did you pull that off? Well, I actually, I, I, I'm actually starting a new company. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. I'm, I'm starting a new company that's uh, specifically designed uh, to help conventions operate better. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and this oh. is. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so wouldn't that be really nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. Laura, this is Laura Hickman, my beautiful wife. Hello. And Hello. co-author. Hello. <laughs> You're going to have to be better now. They're going to think I've got a voice box here. <laughs> He's got a small a puppet on his lap. Words. All my words are in the ends of my fingers when I write. Okay. Uh, Ooh, thank you, dear, for bringing nice. Well, you just took that from a re- re- repetitive sound to a... Much more wise statement. <laughs> Josh, you're thinking too hard again. I know. Oh, right. It's I nine go. o'clock, day one. That was it. You're leaving now. Yeah, I actually have to leave and go catch a child that was lobbed, you know, into the sky, and now is going to come it's like down. A, it's like a Stanley cameo. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh. Jesus comes in to wow. bring the. Thank you. The so I'll be up as soon as we're finished. Can I have my shoe back? All right. Sometimes. That's right. <laughs> No, actually, I have, uh, we're actually do, we are starting a new business and, and uh, designed to make conventions run better. It's it's actually for not only um, uh, not only vendors but the conventions themselves. We think we got, we can actually improve 
sales for any vendor by about 30%. Um, we decided to prove it actually and to try it this year. And what we did with Sojourner Tales is um, we put out that if you would text uh, Sojourner to our number, right, that you would get a link to purchase the game before the doors opened. Oh, wow. Nice. Um, it, was a, it was a huge help to us in knowing how many games we Great. really needed to bring. Um, and, and as it turned out, the initial number of games that we sent to the convention was too low. And so we were able, because of the feedback and the pre-sales that we had, to send additional games before the convention opened. Um, as it turns out, however, the, the popularity of this particular system was so great that we continued to sell. Um, <laughs> uh, and now, before the doors open on the convention hall, we will have sold more than half of the stock. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and what, what is really fascinating to me is that, uh, a really interesting statistic, is that of the number of, of texts people we had respond in, with text to our phone number, 70% of those bought the game. Um, wow. That's an incredible uh, sell-through rate in, in terms of response. Emails in similar campaigns usually have a response of about 3%. So what, what we've discovered is that this, this method of doing it uh, connects much more closely with uh, our people. And, and it means that we have effectively already uh, done hugely well in terms of, uh, of the convention. Uh, there's a good chance, actually, we think that we may actually sell out the game on the first day. Wow. Wow. So, um, gosh, that's a tough place. It's a burden, man. That is such a burden. <laughs> but it's an interesting system because not only does it help with, with sales in this way, but we also have a method where people can actually sell product in seminars uh, oh, cool. and in panels, that, uh, that, which is a real problem at conventions uh, mm -hmm. for presenters. And we also have a system uh, that is a virtual line system that allows people using texting in their phones to get in line virtually, mm -hmm. very much like uh, Disney's FastPass mm -hmm. system. Which means that instead of standing in line for hours and hours to get an autograph, you could get in line virtually, not have to stand in the line, go ahead and enjoy the rest of the convention, shop the, the vendor's floor, or even for that matter, get in line for somebody else's autograph that you want. Mm -hmm. It allows, it benefits everybody. It benefits the celebrity because they'll be able to see more people this way. It, and because the purchase takes place in the texting off-site, that means that the transaction is already taken care of. That means you can see more people in a given period of time. It's better, it's better for the fan because they don't have to stand in line all day to get their autograph. And it's better for the convention because you don't have people just standing around. They're, they can enjoy the convention rather than spend all of their time waiting for something to happen. So we're really very excited about this system, and we're effectively testing it out. So if, if there's anything I'm looking forward to, I guess maybe that's it. That's that's really interesting. I'm kind of I'm kind of blown away by that concept. Uh, are you talking when you say virtually put in line? Um, is it a come back at this time for your autograph type situation, or it's a you're number thirty in line and inform them as it gets closer? We we would actually assign you a time. Mm -hmm. And then we can text you and remind you that the time is coming up. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. So it's almost like just booking an appointment. Exactly. It's it actually is hugely helpful to to it's hugely helpful to the celebrity because one, they don't have to feel the pressure of the huge line. Right. And more than that, um, when people come to see them, they're fresh. Right. Yeah. yeah. They haven't been standing in line for an hour and, and trying to placate their eight-year-old son, you know, and, <laughs> and, or, or or feeling like they have are missing something because of having uh, to stand in line. Well, I can imagine they're probably also, as far as the patron is concerned, it probably uh, kind of gives you a sense of anticipation, like cool, like I have an appointment with, you know. 
what? so and so at exactly. at four o'clock. This is really you know I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna go play something at Mayfair while I get a chance to, and then you know I'll, by the time I get done demoing a couple games and getting some ribbons, I'll be ready for my. Well, exactly, and if it so happens, for example, if you're walking down the hall of the convention, as we're anticipating people would do, and it, and here's the poster on the wall, Nathan Fillion is going to be here and doing autographs in this time to text this to this number to get in line for, for your autograph. If, in fact, there are more people in line than he can autograph in that period of time, the text will just come back and tell you, gee, we're sorry right. that, that the, the, the line, the queue for him is full at this point. Um, and offer you other options. Mm -hmm. So it, then it means that you're not wasting your time right? That's waiting for an event that isn't it, going to happen. It would be neat to see a system like that work where if, if something like that did happen where possibly the autograph sold out for the first day, like the opportunities to get an autograph for the first day, and then depending on where you fell at the end of the line that day, maybe you jump to the front of the line the next day, and then that there's no of, reason why that can't be part right. of the system, and 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 for that matter, if if you if you have a celebrity who comes in and is going to do a, a signing for for four hours, and discovers that the line suddenly is fulfills that full four hours, and that there's still interest for that, you can schedule another signing, mm -hmm. and with confidence that you have people that you'll have people who are going to yeah, that are, really cool. who are going to be there. It, it it it's so much better for everybody that's involved. I, I I'm actually um, I'm actually going to be talking to the Gen Con people about uh, implementing a lot of these systems. They're very very simple implementations, and we can integrate with the system that they've got. But uh, um, uh, there are extensions of this that we're talking about that we're very excited about. Uh, uh, for example, uh, and this is part of the implementation that we're working on. The ability to go through the hall with your smartphone, go to the convention booths in the vendors area, and buy products with your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, that you don't have to, and that you don't have to stand in line necessarily and do the transaction there. You buy it with your phone. Go to this booth, buy this. Go to that booth, buy that, and not take it with you. Not have to carry it around the hall. Mm -hmm. But simply come back at the end of the day, and we would have people who would get your orders at all of the different booths, do the run for you, collect your swag. A personal shopper concept. A personal co shopper That's concept. Really, and really then bad. at the end of the day, rather than lugging all this stuff around, you can come back at the end of the day, uh, pick it up, or for that matter, we can even offer a shipping service for you right there. How would you handle exclusives, like common exclusives, where a line is like out the door? Like, it wouldn't be that. It's the whole situation of you're in line, you do it. They then come pick it up. Well, I know, but there. Are, I'm just curious as to how it would be received if, like, you have people that are in line physically versus because it, con exclusives can be very touchy. But you still have to go to the booth to get it to order. Right. But yeah. The, 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 the point here, I think, is that. It, and it, it's one of the it, it's one of the integrations that we're talking about because I understand what you mean. Yeah. Uh, for example, if if it were just a matter of texting, mm -hmm. right? Then uh, or or a QR code. Right. Somebody could uh, let's say you, uh, you're getting in line to see William Shatner for whatever reason. And, uh, <laughs> I would no. Wouldn't no. <laughs> and so you. Uh, oh. So, and it's a huge line, right? Right. Um, well, if you're just using a QR code or a, or a text, right, it, it'd be very easy to simply take a photograph of that, spread it out to the internet, and everybody could just pile into that. But uh, what our system actually does is it ties your phone number with your badge, and the badge is a readable badge. And so when you get in line, you get in line with the badge, and and. Uh, that's that becomes part of the integration. Okay. You know, so so the physical presence is required. Okay. If you're doing a con exclusive, then a con exclusive would be a matter of scanning the badge okay. to put you in the virtual. So I have to physically go get in line. It's just you wouldn't necessarily have to take whatever con exclusive with you. Then they come pick it up from the bar, hold on to it, and then you could still also enjoy the uh, the rest of the con without right. having right. the. Or even spend if spend the time or dedicate yourself right. to that. E even if they didn't include con exclusives in something like that, 
at least then you're mitigating the amount of people that are in line. Like if I'm in the Mayfair line trying to buy two or three different versions of Catan and they have an exclusive, yeah. but I'm not in line for the exclusive, I can buy all my product and then not have to get in line, which gives somebody else an opportunity exactly. to step yeah. in that line for well, the exclusive. It, my concern would be because common exclusives tend to be very limited. Like, yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is what I'm that's, where, that's where he came back with similar to the celebrity concept. It's yes. that virtual queue is you sign up, you get in queue, and there's only 200 some odd spots, which is the equal amount to the con exclusive. We have 300 of them, only 300 people can get in line. And once the virtual queue or physical queue are full, they go, sorry, we're done. That's or, they, or, or the company is then I love it. Put, into, <laughs> put into a situation where they have to balance the amount of product that they put in the system versus the amount of product they have for physical transactions. So, you know, if you have 300 exclusives and, you know, maybe your company says, well, we're going to take this, we're going to take 100 of these and we're going to make them available for this system, and then the other 200, because we want to encourage people to come into the booth and check things out, we're going to then or, push. Or you, do something, or you do something else, which is what we're doing with, uh, with Sojourner Tales. This um, is our challenge coin for Sojourner that, well, Tales. Well, funk, yes. <laughs> ah. Now, the challenge coin for Sojourner Tales is actually a game piece. Nice. The game itself has a cardboard piece that is used as, a, as who is the okay. leader in the, in, at that particular point in the game. And how do I get one of those? <laughs> well, yeah. well, you come to my booth. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's the Getting thing. The we've, sold, <laughs> we've, we've sold more than half of our stock of the game. But if you, come to the, if you come to my booth to pick up the game, you'll also have the opportunity to buy this exclusive. Uh, Which is for me a very nice right upsell. <laughs> <laughs> Deb says she has cash on her right now. Well, and there you go. <laughs> um, but this is the kind of thing that that is helpful, not just to the vendor, but is also helpful to the uh, to the attendee of the convention to make their experience to maximize their experience, to make their experience more enjoyable, to try to take all of the frustration out of the convention experience and, and make everything run as smoothly as possible. I go through a lot of these. I, I was at, at Comic-Con Salt Lake. Salt Lake Comic-Con was it, it just turned into a monster. It was amazing. Uh, they opened the doors on Salt Lake Comic Con and they were immediately shut down by the fire marshal. <laughs> that happened here. That happened here yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and that and they and they grew from the initial eighty thousand to a hundred thousand at Fanex this last spring. They're going to do Comic Con again and it's going to be a hundred and twenty thousand. It's a, a monstrous show. But I go through the conventions and and I'm I, by the end of the convention I I it, it looks. It looks like a scene from Gone with the Wind. Everybody's like lying on the ground, <laughs> the wounded and the walking dead. It's just uh, because we're all so tired. Right. I yes, I, I presented as a vendor for the first time in July at a small convention. It is like it is work, even though it seems like you're sitting behind a desk all day. Mm -hmm. It is extremely tiring. It is. It is exhausting. And it's exhausting for the attendees also because because of this very factor. You, you find yourself waiting for things yeah. a lot. We're fighting crowds all of the time. Fantasy flight. Yeah. Fantasy, fantasy flight, flight line. Yeah, the fantasy flight, flight line. Yeah. What would the fantasy flight line be like if, exactly. one, everything was pre-sold and all you had to do is present your badge to claim your product? I would cut down on the, the number of people you have in the hallways by... 20%. Exactly. If doing a and it would, it, would also, yeah. it would also it would also increase the amount of space you could allot to have to, gameplay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or now, material. Now, now I present one concern there. What if there's the first time attendee and no idea what the system is and is walking up and they find out we've already sold out of everything pre-sold. And they're, it's a Saturday. They're on the that, most busy day of the year. But what's, year. But what's the difference anyways. between what's the difference between that and showing up on Thursday afternoon and the exact same thing happening? Yeah. Let me give you the other, let let me give the you the other side of that, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other side of that, and I heard this as we were doing these pre-sales. The other side of that is the guy who can only come on Sunday, mm -hmm. right? And he is screwed if everything is sold out by Friday night, right? right. Yeah. In my scenario. He has bought my game, and it will be in my booth for him on Sunday. 
even though that's the only day that he can be there. So in that situation, what would you reserve a date of? This is when I'll be here to pick it up. Or in his well, in his particular case, I I just put a notation on his file. He will pick it up on Sunday. It would be it would be just like it's it's that system is very similar to a system that most mainstream like video game sources use when you pre-buy a new console. Oh, I'm like thinking. they hold all of these game numbers pre back pre-orders. and you walk in and you say, here's my receipt, shows that I bought this and then they okay. go, oh, here's your thing. Oh, here's here's a question. Sure. So let's say that you go through and you pick out what you're, you're doing. Um, do you think that that would hurt vendors that are there for like the smaller vendors because you don't have that foot traffic anymore uh, to you're still going to specifically to those things. Yeah, but you are going to still have that foot traffic yeah because they're going to come and pick it up okay and and frankly I think you're going to get better foot traffic because I yeah that's what I'm stuck in the fantasy flight line for three hours thing. waiting for net run net run okay. to you're, go you're back to have a lot more time but freedom of movement yeah to go back to a point you were making, though, Demery, mm -hmm. uh, you were saying that what if they're sold out on Friday? Well, the one of the things that Tracy already touched on is you can start selling it early to get a, yeah. a an estimate of what's the market going to be like for this product. And the, then if somebody like product. Fantasy Flight knows that they're everybody wants has to guess what they're going to sell of any particular <laughs> thing. Yeah, that's true. true. And nobody wants to have to ship anything home, mm -hmm. right? right? Uh -huh. So so they have to guess, and they have to guess low, which means that somebody's going to lose. If you have if you have a game, and you, if you come out with a, a new... Uh, if Fantasy Flight came out with a, a brand new Star Wars thing that everybody had to have, that everybody had to have, and started pre-sales on that a month before the convention, by the time they get to the point where they need to ship, they're going to know what the market's going to be like for it. And if it's a huge sell, seriously, I would be more than happy if I were Fantasy Flight to just park a semi-truck full of them back here if all I was doing was handing them to people who had already given me their money. <laughs> I see, like some of the big vendors like Fantasy Flight, where they literally they have ten or fifteen games, and they have huge lines on every single one of them. And yeah, they, I could see them parking some out back and just ferrying them into the con hall to sell. And but also it would also limit the it would also give them more space because they wouldn't necessarily have to have as much on hand at the con for because so many of the people who are coming to the con have already pre bought it that you're it just helps you make the con about. It helps and with I, line management yeah, as well. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, because I'm going to reverse myself on the con exclusives. I think that that would kill the frustration of oh, yeah. con oh, exclusives. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It would, kill, it would just, you would, general, like, the whole, like, exhibitor hall floor would just end up being so much more calm, because you're, you're not, everybody's not frantic to go find everything and buy Thursday everything. Thursday morning. It, Thursday after, oh, Thursday when mm. the con hall opens, everybody's just, Blitzing to yeah. everything. So whiz kids is a huge. And yeah. I think all those yeah. kind of things you could end up reducing a whole lot of stress and just. Yeah. What a, and what a great thing for the small vendor. Mm -hmm. Because, because I've already got, I don't have to fight for that big game that I needed that I wanted that was actually going to make my convention. I can take my time now. Right. And visit those small booths and and look at the interesting new things that are being oh, done yeah. right. because I've already taken care of that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, right. you actually have you have you have four full days to do right. a whole con hall instead of a day and a half of just those specific booths and then the rest of the con is the and, other. And one. I and I know that this may this may Sorry. sound mercenary and maybe it is, but the truth is that that at, that if I've already bought my stuff and I come to the convention. I am going to buy more. Right, because if you buy, if you buy whatever uh, new game system comes out for $60 a month ahead of time, then you've got a month from that point till Gen Con to save up for whatever else you want to And that's an money. additional help to the small vendors. Well, and that's an additional help to those small vendors who really need this kind yeah. of help. The other thing yeah. I see is you've already gotten those completely out of the way. You've already bought those big games you're looking for. So now your mind is just... 
browsing around looking at stuff, and oh, that might pique your interest, but you may have not had the funds on hand before or the space on hand before to pick up those games. All of which is why we believe we can improve sales for everybody, both the big vendors and the small vendors, by about 30% just by instituting a system like this. I see it. Oh, absolutely. Well, and I think Kickstarter was a... Um, an interesting way for a lot of people to utilize the con. For example, Sojourner Tales. I know you have at least a few people, including myself, that are coming here to pick up their copy of Sojourner Tales. They utilized the Kickstarter and the opportunity to pick it up because it's here. So I, I don't know what the success of that was in terms of people that were Kickstarter backers that wanted to pick up Sojourner Tales here, but was that kind of another indication for you that doing something like this would help? Well, let me uh, let me just ask you. Okay. Are you excited to get this game? I am. Why do you, that is the, yes, he's excited. that is that is the response we've gotten from every one of our Kickstarter backers that is coming to the convention. I've had people who are coming to Dragon Con <laughs> beg me to do the same thing down there because they want that to be part of their experience. They want to they want me to hand them that game. Mm -hmm. They want that connection. And I, I and I think that they they've earned that. Right. So so actually connecting the Kickstarter with this this way has been great because it's made the connection personal. And it has made the excitement level for people much higher. I, I was coming down the elevator here earlier today and I had the game in the little basket of, of <laughs> my go kart here and <laughs> And somebody was somebody was in the elevator and didn't hadn't hadn't known them. They were not a backer, but they pointed the game. They said, "Oh, I've heard really good things about that." <laughs> How? <laughs> you know, Did I mean, you turn and look at them and go, "Yeah, it's I already too. been talked about." <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly, they were I hear the, the, the guy who made it selling it. Uh, clearly, <laughs> they're an established fan. <laughs> <laughs> That or another name drop, the Dice Tower's been dropping your name already. Oh, so, uh, okay. Well, there, there you go. go. Tom Bassel's already on it. So it's a lot, Caleb. So it is such a, it, it, it's a paradigm shift, certainly for new, for new people coming to the convention. Uh, it's a paradigm shift for conventions as well. I mean, we do have to sell the conventions on the concepts. But, but in, terms, in terms of the enjoyment of people at the conventions, we're using established technology, technology they've already got in their pocket, to make their life at the convention better, make everybody's life at the convention better, and and so that's why we're going into this business. That's why we're trying to get build this in in such a way that we can can improve conventions everywhere. But I think I think that's a smart idea. Go ahead. No, that's all. That's all I was gonna say. I think on the on the flip side of this, the only thing that's going to be missing out is you have those stories of fourth day of con where you have made it through and you're not going to have those man I made it through the line that was 400 people long because now the lines are going to be so short so no those stories are going to be replaced by I got to see every one of the celebrities that I wanted to see in one day. In one day. <laughs> well, the fast pass premise at Disney that he mentioned, that's exactly what that is. It's my wife is a master at that. Benefit that's why I love this plan. The, the other thing is like the whole pre purchase thing, I can see it up being a phone app for Gen Con. Mm -hmm. Where you have all the pre purchases available a month ahead of time before the con. You can go in and go and and then it's just everybody, all the big vendors and all the small vendors can get in there and people can look and buy. And think, about the, think about the time saving in that alone. When you go up to a booth and you want to buy something, mm -hmm. you give them your card, they take your card, they have to run your card, mm -hmm. they have to mm -hmm. get approval, you have to sign. How much time does that take? Right. Well, it has to happen three times because it didn't work the first two times. Yeah, <laughs> they, artists, exactly, all of those people. Yeah. All of those people that way. If you do this ahead of time, or if you do this on your phone, the processing takes place off-site and is much, much faster. Might All be cheaper. You, and cheaper. It will be cheaper. All you have to do is come to the booth, show them that you've bought it, and and it. they all and then they decrement their. And you can well, well, also and add, include a map of the, of okay, the exhibit yeah. hall mm -hmm. where it is. I know there are certain there were certain vendors that I went to last year. That actually didn't have card readers either. Yeah. So I mean, if you, I know, it was like very few, but there were a few. And so uh, 
I think that will help in that scenario too if they if they can't use a card re card reader or just choose not to, where you've already already bought whatever product you wanted to buy and then you can just go buy and pick it up and leave. Well and you he made you way. made the comment that your, your mercenary sounding comment uh, is one hundred percent true. I don't know if Derek can speak for this, but I know my wife and I can because Paizo does their subscription pickup at Gen Con. Because they do that, I have already paid for everything I'm going to get from Paizo, and now I can budget that money because I've already paid for it to spend on other things. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Number one thing. It's very, it's a very legitimate. It's there, and I'm assuming your wife allows you. Absolutely. <laughs> My wife is amazing. I didn't even think about this, but whatever events are going much. on, if you've got if you've got twenty dollars in generic tickets, but you want to go to a Pathfinder Society game that starts in an, you know an hour. You need to make it to certain places in the exhibit hall. You've already bought your game, so you can just wait until the, end of, little, the end of the day, know, or the end of the day, or probably even the end of the exhibit weekend, hall yeah. closes, and then pick it up then. You know, yeah. instead of having to rush, hurry up and get there, wait in line for half an hour, and then you're already like to your Pathfinder Society right. by the time you. And, you and, if yeah. some, and if somebody forgets, yeah, somehow just forgets that they bought something. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Text it's them, already paid email, for. Text yeah. them, email them, let them know that it's there, and and or 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 we can text them and give them the option of just shipping it to them, yeah. And, yeah. and it's done. Yes. Yeah, after the con's over, yeah. we'll just send it. Those people, especially when you're in the situations where, yeah, yes, you had something per pre-purchased, but you had some emergency come up and you had to leave the con and forgot to go pick up some stuff before you left, and oh, I'm oh. already gone. Or maybe you weren't able to show up at all for yeah. one reason yeah. or another. Or for one reason or another. It, you can even just build that into it and say, look, and if you don't pick it up, we'll just ship it to you, and this will be the charge for the shipping. As far as implementation is concerned... Yeah. Um, Are you going to get technical on Oh, yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> he does have a GoPro. Uh, the you will run completely you over. derailed me. Thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> uh, can this be implemented in pieces, or does the entire thing need to? No, we can stage implement this, and we are in fact stage implementing. I mean, we are already demonstrating it with this one particular piece. In fact, at this convention, I'm going to be demonstrating a number of components. Mm -hmm. One of the things, for example, that we're doing in Killer Breakfast is we're going to have people text when they come into Killer Breakfast. Oh. And then we will select um, winners of our contests. Um, we'll select the winners automatically using our texting system. We'll say how many winners we're going to have of this particular context, contest, and it will text them that they have won and to come up during the show. Nice. That's awesome. Um, this, this lets us run contests very well. Uh, but hidden, of course, not so hidden actually in all of that, is that I should be able to walk away with the texting phone numbers of everyone at Killer Breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> the true story comes out. A lot of cell numbers. <laughs> and as we've seen from Sojourner pre-sales, the response rate on direct text is phenomenally high. So it, there's, there are certain mitigation in that. We find because texting is, is so, such a powerful tool, we have to be careful not to overuse it mm -hmm. because people will opt out very quickly if you're bothering them. Mm -hmm. But if the targeted texts are about things that they are, in fact, interested in and we're offering them real opportunity, then the response rates are enormously high. So um, it's, not, it's not only about the convenience here, but it's also about the metrics on the back end, our ability to to be in touch with our audience. The, that perhaps is the most important aspect of all, because it is it is no longer today. It's no longer about being published. It's no longer about advertising. It's about being in touch with an audience. And 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 advertising is not doing it. Mass advertising is not doing it anymore. Email is not doing it anymore. People are ad blind when it comes to the web. That's true. You yeah. have to be in touch with the audience directly, and this is the way that we think we can do it. Um, do you have any price points for like vendors versus? Um, right now, uh, we're we're still working on the pricing on this. That uh, we are looking, I think, currently at 
about two and a half to three cents a text mm -hmm. in terms of, of uh, broadcasting text. Um, we're probably looking at process uh, at credit card processing at around depending on vendors that that, that we work with it could be around three three to four percent which is higher of course than square or or, or other processors mm -hmm. but the services that we add on top of that and the capabilities for through sale that we add on top of that make it a real bargain in terms of processing charge mm -hmm. so um, I think that uh, I think econ the economics of it are hugely beneficial across the board to everybody. So let's see, the question was what was I looking for? Sorry about that. That's okay. Oh, it's cool. It's, we're all it's looking forward to. definitely something we're all interested in. So. Yeah. And yeah. as both vendors and, and, and uh, attendees, podcasters, well, let's, and attendees. Podcasters. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and go around the table real quickly and kind of get everybody's yeah, answer. Sure. And then, I don't know, I'm not worried about intro. If you want to introduce yourself when you give what you're interested in or what you're excited for for Gen Con, then go right ahead. Uh, and then uh, we have a special treat where I think we're going to crack open um, a copy of this and, and do an actual play, possibly. Yes, we're we're going to do an auditory cracking open yeah. on that yeah. board game. <laughs> <laughs> like that. It won't be that. So, uh, Ragar, go ahead and start. All righty. Stuff and things. Um, All right, here we are. The biggest thing I've got going this year uh, is just a, a large series of Starship Troopers games. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Well, I looked at yeah. the calendar. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, I actually got invited last year uh, to a semi-private convention uh, for New Year's Eve, and uh, those are the guys uh, that that host that. So I'm looking at getting more more involved with that. Neat. Lance. Um, in honor of our guest, I will be called Dragon Lance. <laughs> um, I'm it was much funnier delivered it, than it what was. you told me earlier. Thank you. Series. Thank you so much. Um, so far this year, I'm looking forward to the things I did last year. Um, Pickman's Killer Breakfast is, of course, top on that list. In all fair, in, in reality, not just because you're here. Um, I want to see what D&D is doing new this year, because they've got their new system out, playing it, not just testing it. Um, interested in joining the Pathfinder Society for the first time. So, a lot of role-playing, plus a few of the Kickstarters that I have supported are, are meeting here and doing their own thing. So, I'd like to learn how to play the games that I've now purchased. <laughs> Derek. We're, um, we're announcing the names for everybody, it seems. Yes. He'll be known as Dragon Derek. <laughs> 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 um, I am really excited to have a uh, universal storytelling system being run this year by um, several of my friends. Yay! Um, yeah. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> yay. <laughs> Awesome, excited. a new role play. That was a Monty game. Python, yay. Yeah, it was. So, so therefore, it was his character. Um, it's, it's his turn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I'm actually excited about being able to attend Gen Con this year. So, instead of running everything, um, everything? I've got minions to run things for me. <laughs> <Minions. laughs> <laughs> Pay for the bags, they'll do whatever you want. Exactly. <laughs> it's cheap. Yes, I will. So, um, so I'm, I'm actually quite free this year. So, I'm very, very excited about that. Dr. Deb. Dr. Deb. Dr. Deb. I am here. So to take uh, Lance's viewpoint, I'm, I've am i been looking forward to Killer Breakfast because it is Dragon Lance's anniversary. And now I'm even more excited because I can't wait to see this new technology in action. So, Because um, I'm a big Disney Fast Pass fan. So I'm like, yes, bring that brilliance to the convention. My world is is a better place now. Um, Not to interject too much, Deb, but I'm pretty sure as long as somebody puts some sort of connection with Disney anything, it's pretty much in the bank. That's true. <laughs> yeah. At least for the Demery house. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. But, um, but it, what they do works so darn well. Um, so I'm going to be going to Mayfair. I'm going to be hanging out and getting my ribbons because uh, 
demoing their games is always fun. That's right. I'm going to be in True Dungeon for the first time ever, so that should be some entertaining stories. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to be in the Pathfinder, um, their big society game. Um, I don't know what it's called. It's the big one that they're doing. Pathfinder Special. Yeah. Season, the pa season five. Thank you. Pathfinder Special. So I can't wait to be in that one. So those are my big, big things that I'm looking forward to. Avital. Avital, that's me. Um, I like going to the writing seminars because I'm interested in writing. Um, I also like wearing costumes. Love costumes. I'm the TARDIS, the Ninth Doctor, Kaylee from Firefly and Castiel from Supernatural. The four days of this convention. Um, I'm also actually excited about Killer Breakfast. I went for the first time last year because Deb and Josh were like, hey, you should go to this thing. I was like, what is this thing? They're like, it's cool. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, that was um, the conversation. Yeah, pretty really much. <laughs> and I, uh, because it was the Dragonlance anniversary, they're like, well, you need to read these books. So on my vacation a couple weeks ago, I read the first three, the Dragons of uh, Autumn Twilight and Winter Night and Spring Dawning. I, I read the Annotated Chronicles. Tracy was over here waiting. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll correct you. Oh, I can tell. No, I was trying to remember. <laughs> There you go. Oh, that's right. I did read those. Yeah. So I, yeah, I read those for the first time and really enjoyed them. So I'm really, actually, really looking forward to the Killer Breakfast too. So, Caleb. Hey. As the uh, longtime fan of uh, the established facts, and also uh, now going to just start forcing my way into there you go. things. Mm -hmm. That's why I showed up last and just kind of stuck yeah. with something. Yeah. <laughs> they can't say no if the mic's dropping, on. Dropping names and everything. Mm -hmm. I already tweeted you guys to them, so you know, just trying to reverse the drop names. Uh, you so. have a lot of work before you can get to our level of dropping names. That's right. Don't worry. So, uh, it will take long. Kick the ice bags for the boot and postcards for the dungeon. Yay. <laughs> We're not up to you. It's not our turn. <laughs> So going back to it, um, I'm going to be running some of Derek's uh, USS this weekend, which I'm really excited about. Uh, first, uh, I only played one game. I've never jammed at Gen Con before. I've jammed plenty, but first time jam at Gen Con or any con, so I'm really excited about this. The challenge is going to be amazing. Uh, I've, got, I've got confidence that I'm okay, but it's just going to be fun. In, in you have honest... Any value? <laughs> you know, anyone here knows that I'm one of the most mellow people here, so not worried about that. From uh, from the little supplies that you've, you know, shared or shown us yeah, already, already well you, yeah, you, you're more you're prepared than a lot of the you're other DMs I've seen. kicking my butt, and I've actually run the system before, so. <laughs> well, I'm the, I listen to about 60 hours a week worth of podcasts, and I'm not kidding you there. So, and this includes GMing podcasts. What he's saying is he podcasts. doesn't work very often. <laughs> No, well, no, this is during work, yeah. so, you know. <laughs> He's getting paid to do this. What, what do you not do for a living? <laughs> All my job is with my hands. I build computers, okay. and it's I'm pretty repetitive. So, <laughs> anyways, it only uses about half my brain. Okay. Going on, um, I'm going to be really excited about running that, and uh, I'm going to be going to uh, the Double Clicks concert this uh, on uh, Friday. <laughs> And I've got the Dice Tower live on Friday as well. Those are two big things. I've never actually done a lot of events. So signing up for events and actually going to things, other than just showing up at the con and meandering and jumping into things, is going to be awesome to actually have events scheduled. And Yeah. Hey, um, hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi. Uh, it's our new friend, Matt. 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 Oh, wait, wrong group. Wrong group. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Uh, no, what I'm looking forward to is uh, I've got a few costumes kind of thrown together this year. Uh, Captain Jack Harkness, Jane Cobb from Firefly. Uh, tried to get an Agent Venom from Thunderbolt sewn together. It looks awful. It's staying at home. <laughs> uh, looks like something you'd wear to knock over a 7-Eleven or something. <laughs> So, uh, Give me all your money. Are you a Thundercat? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Snarf. <laughs> oh, no, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> this is not a neighborhood I am familiar with. <laughs> Welcome to India. <laughs> The gaming capital of the world. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, no, I'm just probably just going to wander around, hang out with some friends. Uh, never really done any of the events. Uh, didn't really ever get online, check out when they were going on, what the schedules were. Didn't buy any tickets. So uh, just going to kind of play it by me like previous years when I was going. Just get some generics and they'll, they'll mobile app and just be like, okay, what's happening? Just yeah. walk into a random room with generics and, you know. Anybody got a seat? <laughs> <laughs> see what happens. Oh, and don't forget, Mikey Mason on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. That, or you could also get in touch with uh, Silver Crescent Publishing and have them throw you your own little personal game. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That was fun. Um, for me... Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. <laughs> the match was so much better. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, it's gonna be like this is the first year I don't have anything planned. Like I have literally nothing on my schedule. I got my press badge and that was it. I just had been so busy otherwise that I missed pre register or missed registration by a week and a half and I'm like, at that point in time, uh, I might as well just get generic. It snuck up on us this year. Yeah, it did. And so at that point in time I'm planning on seeing if I can sneak in the killer breakfast. We'll see. <laughs> get some generics and see if I can actually manage to get in. Oh, it's for the poor. <laughs> um, and then, I know a guy. <laughs> um, kind of uh, just kind of plan on just uh, do a lot of just trying to get in contact with a lot of people this year. Um, try and get try and get some more interviews for after Gen Con's over and throughout later in the year. Try and get some context made so that we can. Just get a little more content later in the year. It's kind of what I'm doing this year, um, and then I'm gonna try and slide myself into some games and like there again, walk into a walk into a room and is everything open, and we'll see what happens. Even if things are full, yeah, check it out because oh I know I know gamers yeah, have saying. a really bad habit of going to other games. I'm quite aware. <laughs> He's speaking for or standing in lines. Well, I'm saying this to the people who are listening who may not. Yeah, not that. Not <laughs> we, we told him to limit his rant on it this year. <laughs> yes, <laughs> until the post gen comes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then I'll have three additional all, people to that's right. Rant <laughs> all, they had all virtual bets are off. No whole yeah. bar. Yeah. Come Sunday, but by the way, your your um, your app your your process should not allow people to use specific tickets for certain events for other events to get into them. I promise. <laughs> I promise I might do that. The whole being able to use an event ticket as a generator is ridiculous. No. <sighs> no. Uh, for me, it's just going to be a lot of just kind of, I don't have anything planned this year, so I'm very flexible on what I can do and just kind of enjoy myself. I am back up with friends, so I moved to Florida away from them all, so... I'm back in the Great White North. Canada? How are you here? Indiana for me is officially known the Great White North after 61 inches of snow. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that was my nickname in high school. Oh. I don't even know, right. know why. Oh. Yeah, so I'm Prime, apparently. And, um, <laughs> Hi. Hi, Hi Prime. Prime. Hi. 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 Um, hey. <laughs> so the few things that I'm looking forward to, um, I usually every year spend about twenty dollars on generic tickets and just go meandering and get lost and play games with strangers. Um, <laughs> didn't your mother ever tell you that? <laughs> no, there's a lot of things my mom said that I don't do. Anymore. Don't take candy from me. But strangers have the best candy. What if, what, if, what, if, what if it's good candy? What if it's like Blappy Taffy? <laughs> Especially the kind of the nerds in it. I mean, come on, quacks. seriously. I mean, quacks. then you can't get your quacks game. Oh, gosh. No quacks game for you. No. Sorry. <laughs> Sad face. Right? So, anyway. Um, wow. make, make sure you get their approval before playing with them. Oh. Well, let's have the fun. What is going, what's going on here? It is in control. I am. It is in control. So anyway, <laughs> family, family friendly. Anyway, um, I'm going to be doing some uh, some cosplay for the first time this year too. I'm going to be a so drow or dark elf or whatever you want to call it. Um, better than drow. <laughs> better than drow or Drace. drogan. <laughs> so um, that should be fun. I plan on doing that uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, I'm also looking forward to the things going on on Georgia Street. 
That was yeah. that all was pretty interesting. With the the thing trucks and the sun there's, there's more than just food trucks. They got concerts yeah, and stuff going on. I mean, it's more crazy. than just beer garden. Oh yeah, they're all cons. They have food trucks. Did not know that. Were the uh, the police vehicles and fire trucks? <laughs> oh yeah. Hopefully, no more transformers will blow up. <laughs> right. Already started being explosive. Poor Optimus Prime. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but um, otherwise, uh, otherwise it's just going to be another game con for me. I'm, I always enjoy it. I always meet interesting people. I'm almost to the verge of being an extreme extrovert, so you know, meeting strangers is right up my alley. But yeah, so it's time for the, uh, the Hi, plugs. Josh. Yeah. Hi, Josh. Josh. Wait, his name is Josh. It is. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Weird. Um. Cube. Yes. Cube. Josh. Whatever. Um, Josh. I think what I'm most most interested in is maybe the realization that just came over me that this is my last convention as a husband because next year will be my first one as a father. Wait, you're no longer no, no. gonna be a Hold husband. On. Yeah. <laughs> hey, she's well, only a husband. As a child, as a childless husband. There you go. Believe me. I thought I said I literally was thinking just a husband. You did not say it. I know I didn't. It's the word just. And she left the room. But that's okay because this is being recorded, so we're fine. So it'll be my last convention as just a husband. This may be your last convention. <laughs> she is a doctor. That's this right. is why Josh. editorial is so important. Josh, oh. no marriage con for you. Oh, well, I will have to talk, talk to Tracy about marriage con. <laughs> Recently, I, I think the next person you're going to be interviewing is Dr. Phil. <laughs> so. I'll be looking at this, trying to look at this convention from a different viewpoint, um, because you know, I, Don, you and Bonnie dealt with having two kids here. Luckily, this will be your year without them. Uh, we we didn't have them last year either, but um, I thought they were here for a day. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> Josh, just right. stop. Just, 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 just literally. Just so, what are you off. looking forward Josh, to at the convention, I'm Josh? Looking forward to going to the exhibit hall without being a crazy schedule like I normally have. Now, now, cue the plugs. <laughs> because I'm going. You're so much fact like to fake the following people. And also, and also, That's picking right. up all my stuff at Paizo Goodman Games, uh, <laughs> possibly at Tracy Higgins booth, unless he gives me my Sojourner Tales copy tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got a Mega Dungeon map to pick up from Gaming Paper. And I also want to take a look at this apparent D&D attack wing that I've just been informed of. Uh, I'm very curious of that. And, and shut up and give me my give me your money stuff because I'm just a fan of little dragon mini thing. Ask anybody. But um, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Your shelf's getting and then a little heavy. Of course, your dice that you got to buy. And then dice. And, yeah. you, you don't do game you science. You can finally make use uh, of well, your mini. I've got my game. <laughs> okay. I don't need uh, my wife already mentioned the killer breakfast. I'm excited about that. I'm doing two true dungeons this year. I'm excited about that. I, the list goes on and on. The Pathfinder Society stuff. Yes, I was just trying to look at it from an existential side about the reality that I'm going to be a dad next year. But if you guys don't like it, shut up. Hey, remember, the Attack Wing game is a two-player game, so your wife and you can sit at home while the kids may be sleeping right there. Uh, You're that's good. good to know. And his schedule's not busy this year. It's not. Amazingly. Okay. Don, your turn. Don. So... I would have to say that, that gentleman, the gentleman that just tried to walk in this room, looks so confused. <laughs> What's going on? He had a copy of the set in his hand. He wanted to play a game. Wow. Well, you know, I'll, get I'll a play second. A game. <laughs> get him back in here. Let's, Let's do this. We'll do two life plays. <laughs> um. I would have to say, you know, other than obviously the release of Sojourner Tales, which is going to consume my entire weekend, um, I'm going <laughs> to... Does your wife know this? No. Uh, like no, I, I, uh, I, I, have, I have the uh, fortunate opportunity to uh, help my friend Derek out in running three games. Um, I've Yay. got a game on Friday early afternoon, Friday night, and then another game Saturday night. Um... My children are with my parents, which is amazing. That Yay. means I don't have to push a stroller around a crowded exhibit hall again this year. 
and my brother doesn't have to attempt to watch them when he really just falls asleep on the couch. And then they're covered in markers. That's right. Beads on the floor. That's right. Um, and that's without the kids. Yeah. Um, I will say that this is kind of a, I'm I'm kind of in a unique position because uh, I I think for the most part I have probably attended Gen Con. Uh, more than almost everybody on this podcast, and this is actually going to be my 12th Gen Con this year. And it's the first time I get a chance. I know Tracy's over here laughing at me. 12. <laughs> you are such a baby. <laughs> you are such a baby. <laughs> 12 years of Gen Talk Gen-Con. to me when you hit 20, you silly boy. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, um, yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm I'm really excited to have the opportunity to actually run events at Gen Con because uh, I've been a player and I've I you know walked into games with generics and things like that. So kind of being on the other side of the table, I've run multiple games before for friends. But this is going to be kind of a fun opportunity because I as well. I'm kind of an extremist when it comes to being an extrovert. And so sitting at a table with potentially, you know, 12 to 18 brand new faces is kind of a cool idea. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about going to the Mikey Mason show on Saturday afternoon. Uh, I'm always really excited about doing True Dungeon, and uh, we're doing a Friday morning run. And, of course, something that we haven't gotten a chance to do at previous Gen Cons um, as much as we're going to do this year is uh, I actually have, I know Debbie has one scheduled for Friday, Friday at 12.30, and I have one scheduled for Sunday at 12 o'clock, but we're doing interviews, uh, specific interviews, and I know Anton said he's going to be going around and doing some. I think Derek is as well. So we're going to be doing a lot of coverage uh, with individual uh, game designers and developers and authors and artists, and, and we yeah. just want to, uh, attendees, we just want to talk to and get as much exposure for the con and the people that are here. Um, just because, I mean, we're passionate about this convention, and showing why we're passionate about this convention is kind of what we want to do. So um, Yeah, I've got an interview um, with uh, the Conquest person mm-hmm. that did the Kickstarter just recently. Okay. Um, I know so. I know Debbie has one with Mayfair. Right. And I've got one with uh, Mike from Umba. I can't remember... They're a game tournament. I know, that, yeah, they're a game tournament company. They're running a lot of stuff from Mayfair uh, specifically. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, those are the things that I am super sad. And, of course, it's Gen Con. I'm, I'm excited for Gen Con 365 days of the year. So I just get an opportunity to exude that when I'm actually here for the four days. So. But what we have right now, which we're most excited about, is running Soldier and Tech. That's right. I do need to put a public in front of every new apology. My wife, I love you dearly. Next year, I look forward to being both a husband and father in next year's convention <laughs> instead of misspeaking like I did earlier. Now that you come back to my I was going to say, and that is a perfect example, that. gentlemen who are married and listen to this show on how to appropriately address your wife when you know you have screwed up. That's right. <laughs> and since we're on the topic, yes, I want to give a uh, shout out to Mike Massey, oh, who is right. also. No longer just a husband and a father of For one. The second time, <laughs> father of one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's having an, another kid and had had past that's three weeks. She is in the world. She is in the world now. Okay. Your apology was adequate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for you to determine. Yeah, her, I'm a third. Party if he's on the one. next episode, then we'll know that he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please visit us at www.theestablishedfacts.com and our Facebook page, facebook.com slash theestablishedfacts. If you'd like to support us by buying some merchandise, visit cafepress.com slash castingrobot. Bonus.